Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today, in Sexual Reproduction in Plants Part 4, we are going to discuss about a pre-fertilization event called pollination. Pollination is a very wonderful mechanism which provides food, shelter, etc. for the pollinating animals. Many plants are pollinated by a particular animal species and the flowers are modified accordingly and there exists a co-evolution between plants and animals. If pollination fails, there will be no formation of any seed and fruit. Here in the image on the right side, you can see that a plant produces an anther, the anther produces the male gametophyte or the sperm and the pollen grain which contains the male gamete falls on the stigma and this germinates and the male gamete fuses with the ovule nuclei and forms the seed and the endosperm. So if there is no pollination, there will be no seed and fruit formation. Pollinating organisms called pollinators depend on pollination for food. The pollen grains produced in the anther will germinate only when they reach the stigma of the pistil. On the image on the right side you can see that the pollen grains that fall on the stigma are in various stages of germination. Only one pollen tube reaches the embryo sac. The reproductive organs, stamens and pistil of a flower are spatially separated, a mechanism which is essential for the pollen grains to reach the stigmas needed. The process of transfer of the pollen grains from the anther to a stigma of a flower is called pollination. Pollination is a characteristic feature of spermatophyte, gymnosperms and angiosperms. Pollination in gymnosperms is said to be direct as the pollens are deposited directly on the exposed ovules. Here in this image you can see that the pollen directly falls on the naked ovules and the pollination is direct. In angiosperms it is said to be indirect as the pollens are deposited on the stigma of the pistil. What is chasmogamy? In majority of the angiosperms the flower opens and exposes its mature anthers and stigma for pollination. Such flowers are called chasmogamous flowers and the phenomenon is called chasmogamy. What is cleistogamy? In other plants, pollination occurs without opening and exposing the sex organs. Such flowers are called cleistogamous flowers and the phenomenon is called cleistogamy. What are the types of pollination? Based upon the flower on which the pollen of a flower reaches, the pollination is classified into two kinds, namely self-pollination or autogamy, cross-pollination or allogamy. What are the differences between the self-pollination and cross-pollination? Self-pollination occurs in the same flower or between two flowers of the same plant, whereas cross-pollination occurs between two flowers of the two different plants. Pollination usually occurs before blooming in self-pollination whereas pollination occurs after blooming in cross-pollination. Self-pollination does not need the presence of other plants of the same species nearby, whereas cross-pollination needs the presence of other plants of the same species nearby. Self-pollination depends little on pollinating agents, whereas depends completely on pollinating agents. Purity of species is preserved in self-pollination, whereas in cross-pollination, purity of species is not preserved. No new variety develops in self-pollination, whereas in cross-pollination, possibilities of origin of new varieties occur. Self-pollination or autogamy, it's a Greek word. Autogamy means auto means self, gamos means marriage. According to a majority of botanists, the transfer of pollen on the stigma of the same flower is called self-pollination or autogamy. In this image you can see the anther produces the pollen and the pollen falls on the stigma of the same flower. Self-pollination is possible only in those plants which bear bisexual flowers. In order to promote self-pollination, 
the flowers of plants have several adaptations or mechanisms what are the adaptive mechanisms of self pollination number 1 is cleistogamy number 2 is homogamy and number 3 is incomplete dichogamy what is cleistogamy cleisto the meaning of cleisto means closed gamos means marriage cleistogamy means closed marriage flowers never expose or open themselves and expose their reproductive organs and thus the pollination is carried out within the closed flower examples of cleistogamous flowers camellia viola and oxalis here you can see on the left side viola which is a completely closed flower and oxalis on the right side chasmogamous and cleistogamous flowers in camellia bengalensis two types of flowers are produced one flower is aerial the other flower is underground the aerial flowers are brightly colored chasmogamous that means they expose their reproductive organs and are insect pollinated whereas the underground flowers are born on the subterranean branches of the rhizome that are dull cleistogamous and self pollinated and are not dependent on pollinators for pollination here you can see in this image the chasmogamous flowers which are aerial and the cleistogamous flower that are underground in camellia what is homogamy when the stamens and the stigma of a flower mature at the same time it is said to be homogamy it favors self pollination to occur example is mirabilis jalapa and cataranthus roseus here in this image you can see the mirabilis jalapa on the left side and cataranthus roseus on the right side what is incomplete dichogamy in dichogamous flowers the stamen and stigma of a flower mature at a different time sometimes the time of maturation of these essential organs overlap so that it becomes favorable for self pollination here you can see a dichogamous flower which is a sunflower belonging to helianthus what is cross pollination or allogamy it refers to the transfer of pollen on the stigma of another flower in the image you can see that the transfer of the anther occurs from one flower to the another of a different plant what are the types of cross pollination cross pollination is of two types geitonogamy and xenogamy what is geitonogamy when the pollen deposits on another flower of the same individual plant it is said to be geitonogamy in this image on the right side you can see the geitonogamy in the upper part where the anther produces the pollen which is deposited on the stigma of the another flower of the same plant it usually occurs in plants which show monoecious condition it is functionally cross pollination but is generally similar to autogamy because the pollen comes from the same plant what is xenogamy when the pollen which is genetically different deposits on another flower of a different plant of the same species it is called xenogamy here you can see on the left side there is a plant with the flowers and on the right side there is a plant with the flowers and the anther from one flower of a plant is transferred to the stigma of the flower of another plant what are the contrivances of cross pollination the flowers have several mechanisms that promote cross pollination which are also called contrivances of cross pollination or outbreeding devices there are various mechanisms number 1 is diclyny or unisexuality and number 2 is monoclyny or bisexuality diclyny or unisexuality is of two types monoecious and dioecious monoclyny or bisexuality is of four types dichogamy hercogamy heterostyly and self sterility or self incompatibility dichogamy is of two types protandry and protogyny whereas heterostyly 
is of two types die styly and tri styly now let us discuss one by one die cleaning or unisexuality when the flowers are unisexual one only cross pollination is possible there are two types monoecious and dioecious in monoecious plants the male and the female flowers are on the same plant example coconut bitter gourd you can see on the right side the male bud of a bitter gourd which opens up and exposes the stamen and on the right side you can see the female bud which opens up and forms the female flower having the stigma so the both the flowers are present in the same plant in plants like castor and mace autogamy is prevented but gitanogamy takes place on the left side you can see the castor flowers and on the right side you can see the exerted anthers on a tessel what are dioecious flowers male and female flowers on different plants borassus carica and phoenix here both autogamy and gitanogamy are prevented here you can see in carica papaya the male flowers on the left side showing the stamens and the female flowers on the right side showing the branch stigma now what is monocliny or bisexuality flowers are bisexual and the special adaptation of the flowers prevents self pollination what are the types of monocliny or bisexuality dicogamy helicogamy heterostyly and self sterility or self incompatibility let us see one by one in dicogamy the bisexual flowers the anthers and the stigma mature at different times thus checking self pollination the dicogamy is of two types protandry and protogyny in protandry the stamens mature earlier than the stigmas of the flowers example helianthus clerodendron here you can see on the left side the stamens are maturing earlier than the stigma on the right side the style which is maturing after the stamens have matured what is protogyny the stigmas mature earlier than the stamens of the flower example scrofularia nodosa aristolochia bracteata here you can see the stigma and the style the stigma matures earlier and on the right side the stamens mature later than the stigma what is hercogamy in bisexual flowers the essential organs the stamens and stigmas are arranged in such a way that self pollination becomes impossible for example in gloriosa superba the style is reflexed away from the stamens and in hibiscus the stigmas project above the stamens here you can see on the left side the stigma which is bent and far away from that of the stamens in hibiscus on the right side you can see the stamens are below and the style is long and the stigma is more far away from the stamens what is heterostyly some plants produce two to three different forms of flowers that are different in the length of stamens and style pollination will take place only between organs of the same length two types of heterostyly dystyly and tristyly in dystyly the plant produces two forms of flowers one type of flower has a pin or long style long stigmatic papillae short stamens and small pollen grains another type of flowers thrum eyed or short style small stigmatic papillae and the stamens are long and large pollen grains example is primula the stigma of the thrum eyed flowers and the anther of the pin lie in same level to bring out pollination similarly the anther of the thrum eyed and the stigma of the pin ones is found in the same height 
this helps in effective pollination here you can see in the heterostyle in primula whereas there is diastyle where there are two types of flowers on the left side you can see a flower with a long pin style and the stamens are short whereas on the right side which are thrum flowers where the stigma is small and short and the stamens are long above the stigma in tristyle the plant produces three kinds of flowers with respect to the length of the style and the stamens here the pollen from the flowers of one type can pollinate only the two types but not their own type example lithrum you can see here the example of lithrum where three types of flowers are formed based on the types of the style and the stigma on the left side you can see a long style with a stigma in the middle flower you can see a normal style and the third flower you can see a short style now what is self sterility or self incompatibility in some plants when the pollen grain of a flower reaches the stigma of the same it is unable to germinate on its own stigma example abutilon passiflora it is a genetic mechanism in this image you can see that the pollen grains are produced by a s1 and s2 plant when these pollen grains fall on the stigma of s1 s2 plant they will not germinate if the same pollen s1 and s2 pollen falls on the stigma of s1 and s3 plant it will also not germinate it will be rejected when the s1 s2 pollen grain falls on the s3 and s4 stigma it germinates what are the agents of pollination pollination is affected by many agents like wind water insects etc on the basis of the agents that bring about pollination the mode of pollination is divided into abiotic pollination and biotic pollination the latter type is used by majority of the plants what are the abiotic agents anemophily pollination by wind hydrophily pollination by water biotic agents called zoophily now let us discuss one by one the methods of pollination what is anemophily it's called pollination by wind the wind pollinated flowers are called anemophilous flowers the wind pollinated plants are generally situated in the wind exposed regions anemophily is a chance event here you can see in this image lot of pollen dust produced by the flowers which is carried by the wind therefore the pollen may not reach the target flower effectively and are wasted during the transit from one flower to another common examples of wind pollinated flowers are grasses sugarcane bamboo coconut palm maize etc here you can see in the images the paddy the bamboo and the grass what are the characteristic features of the anemophilous plants number 1 the flowers are produced in a pendulous catkin like or spike in florescence on the right side you can see the catkins of carpinus petulus number 2 the axis of the inflorescence elongates so that the flowers are brought well above the leaves you can see the image on the right side of aloe species where the flowers are above the leaves number 3 the perianth is absent or slightly reduced which you can see in the image where one of the stamens or the styles are exposed number 4 the flowers are small inconspicuous colorless not scented do not secrete nectar example is sorghum number 5 the stamens are numerous filaments are long exserted and versatile you can see in the image of creativa religiosa on the right side where the stamens are very long number 6 the anthers produce enormous quantities of pollen grains compared to the number of ovules available for pollination they are minute light and dry so that they can be easily carried to long distances by the wind you can see in the image on the right side in some plants anthers burst violently and release the pollen into the air example attica you can see in the image on the right side number 8 
stigmas are comparatively large protruding and sometimes branched and feathery adapted to catch the pollen grains and all these plants usually have a single ovule you can see in the image on the left side the stigma which is broad and thick on the right side you can see a branched stigma with the pollen grains here you can see the feathery stigma in z maize number 9 the plants produces flowers before the new leaves appear so the pollen can be carried without hindrance of leaves you can see in the image on the right side more number of flowers than the leaves now let us discuss the pollination in maize z maize maize is monoecious and unisexual the male inflorescence called the tassel is born terminally and the female inflorescence called the cob is laterally at the lower levels to that of the tassel maize pollens are large and heavy and cannot be carried by light breeze however the mild wind shakes the male inflorescence and it reaches the pollen which falls vertically down below on the cob the female inflorescence has long sticky silky fibers measuring up to 23 cm in length which projects beyond the leaves the pollen drops from the tassel and is caught by the stigma here you can see the pollination z maize where the male inflorescence of the tassel is at the tip and the female inflorescence of the cob is at the sides laterally between the leaves and they have a multiple fibrous silky stigma and they catch the pollen that falls from the top from the tassel what is hydrophily pollination by water is called hydrophily and the flowers pollinated by water are said to be hydrophilous example hydrilla valisneria though there are a number of aquatic plants only in few plants pollination takes place by water the floral envelope of hydrophilous plants are reduced or absent in water plants like ecornia and water lily pollination also takes place through wind or by insects in most of the hydrophilous flowers the pollen grains process mucilage covering which protects them from wetting what are types of hydrophily there are two types of hydrophily epihydrophily and hypohydrophily what is epihydrophily pollination occurs at the water level examples valisneria spiralis and elodia now let us discuss about the pollination in valisneria spiralis it is a dioecious submerged and rooted hydrophyte the female plant bears solitary flowers which rise to the surface of the water level using a long coiled stalk at the time of pollination a small cup like depression is formed around the female flower on the surface of the water the male plant produces the male flowers which get detached and float on the surface of water as soon as the male flowers come in contact with the female flower and pollination takes place the stalk of the female flower coils and goes under water and fruits are formed after fertilization here you can see the pollination in valisneria where the female plant on the left side shows long coiled stalk bringing the flowers to the surface of the water and forming a cup shaped structure and on the right side the male inflorescence which is released into the water which float on the surface and the pollen falls on the cup shaped structure of the female flower and fertilization occurs what is hypohydrophily pollination occurs inside the water example ceratophyllum and zostera marina here you can see on the right side the pollination that is occurring within the water what is zoophily pollination by the agency of animals is called zoophily and flowers are said to be zoophilous animals that bring about pollination may be birds bats snails and insects of these insects are well adapted to bring pollination larger animals like primates lemurs arboreal rodents and reptiles like uh, gecko lizard and garden lizard have also been reported as pollinators what are the few types of zoophily ornithophily chiropterophily malacophily and entomophily ornithophily pollination by birds is called ornithophily some common plants that pollinated by birds are etherina 
बॉम्ब बैग्स साइजीजियम बिगोनिया एंड स्टरलिटिया एक्सेट्रा हमिंग बर्ड्स सन बर्ड्स एंड हनी ईटर्स आर सम ऑफ द बर्ड्स विच रेगुलरली विजिट द फ्लवर्स एंड ब्रिंग अबाउट द पॉलिनेशन वॉट आर द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स ऑफ ऑर्निथोफिलस फ्लवर्स द फ्लवर्स आर यूजली लार्ज इन साइज द फ्लवर्स आर ट्यूबुलर और कप शेप और अन शेप्ड द फ्लवर्स आर ब्राइटली कलर स्कॉलेट पिंक और ऑरेंज ब्लू एंड येलो विच अट्रैक्ट द बर्ड्स द फ्लवर्स आर सेंटलेस एंड प्रोड्यूस नेक्टर इन लार्ज क्वांटिटीज पोलन एंड नेक्टर फॉर्म द फ्लोरल रिवॉर्ड्स फॉर द बर्ड्स विजिटिंग द फ्लवर्स द फ्लोरल पार्ट्स आर टफ एंड लेदरी टू विच स्टैंड द पावरफुल इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द विजिटर्स Now, what is chiropterophily? Pollination carried out by the bats is called chiropterophily. Some of the common chiropterophilus plants are Kigelia africana, Adansonia digitata, etc. What is malacophily? Pollination by slugs and snails is called malacophily. Some plants of Araceae are pollinated by snails. Water snails crawling among lemna pollinate them. What is entomophily? pollination by insects is called entomophily insects that are well adapted to bring pollination are bees moths butterflies flies wasps and beetles so what are the different types of pollinators and what are the names pollination by bees is called meritophily pollination by moths is called phalaenophily pollination by butterflies is called psychophily pollination by flies is called myophily pollination by beetles is called cantharophily pollination by ants is called myrmecophily pollination by bats is called chiropterophily pollination by birds is called ornithophily pollination by snails is called malacophily here you can see the myrmecophily that is the pollination by ant of the insects Bees are the main flower visitors and dominant pollinators. Insects are chief pollinating agents and majority of angiosperms are adapted for insect pollination. It is the most common type of pollination. What are the characteristic features of entomophilus flowers? Flowers are generally usually large or if small they are aggregated in dense inflorescence. Example Asteraceae flowers. Flowers are brightly colored. adjacent parts of the flowers may also be brightly colored to attract insects for example in poinsettia and bougainvillea the bracts become colored you can see in the image on the right side colorful bracts of bougainvillea flowers are scented and produce nectar flowers in which there is no secretion of nectar the pollen is either consumed as food or used in building up its hive by the honey bees Pollen and nectar are the floral rewards of the visitors. Here you can see a honey bee carrying a pollen grain. Flowers pollinated by flies and beetles produce foul odor or attract pollinators. In some flowers juicy cells are present which are pierced and contents are sucked by insects. So pollination to sum up is of two types self pollination and cross pollination. self pollination is called autogamy cross pollination is called xenogamy or allogamy xenogamy or allogamy is of two types by abiotic agencies like anemophily by the wind hydrophily by the water and biotic agents cantharophily caused by beetle phalaenophily caused by moths meltophily caused by bees psychophily caused by butterflies malacophily caused by snails ornithophily caused by birds chiropterophily caused by bats and myrmecophily caused by ants now let us discuss the pollination in salvia which is a peculiar lever mechanism the flower is protandrous and the corolla is bilabiate with two stamens a lever mechanism helps in pollination each anther has a upper fertile lobe and a lower sterile lobe which is separated by a long connective tissue which helps the anthers to swing freely when a bee visits a flower it sits on the lower lip which acts as a platform it enters the flower to suck the nectar by pushing its head into the corolla 
during the entry of the bee into the flower the body strikes against the sterile end of the connective tissue this makes the fertile part of the stamen to descend and strike on the back of the bee the pollen gets deposited on the back of the bee when it visits another flower the pollen gets rubbed against the stigma and completes the act of pollination in salvia here you can see the flower on the left side where a bee enters into to suck the nectar and the anther which is present in the upper part of the stamen strikes the back of the bee and the pollen dust deposits on the body of the insect when it reaches another flower the stigma that is present touches the pollen grains and the pollen grain is transferred to the stigma this is the method of pollination in salvia which is a lever mechanism other mechanisms found in plants are trap mechanism in aristolochia where the corolla has lot of curved hairs and the insects enter inside to suck the nectar and to take the food of pollen during that time the pollen gets attached to the or gets rubbed to the body of the insects and these insects reach another flowers and the pollen is transferred to the stigma of another flowers here you can see the pit fall mechanism which is seen in arum here the corolla has a pit like structure where the insects fall into the pit and the anther opens up and the pollen grain is carried by these insects outside and reaches the other flowers clip or translator mechanism is seen in asclepiadaceae where a butterfly you can see in the image carries the entire pollinium or the translator and this helps the pollination in papilionaceae you can see the piston mechanism when the insect enters into the keel the pressure on the keel causes the pollen to be pushed out like a piston from the anther what is the importance of pollination pollination is a composite event it provides information about evolution ecology animal learning and foraging behavior flowers not only provide nectar but also provide microclimate site and shelter for the egg laying insects the association of insects benefits the flower by getting pollinated and ensures the propagation of its own progeny the floral parts are well modified in shape size to attract the pollinators to accomplish the event of pollination now let us see the relationship between the yucca and moth tegeticula yuccella it is an example of obligate mutualism it collects the pollen and pushes it in the form of balls down the hollow end of the stigma while visiting the flower to deposit her eggs the moth bores a hole in the ovary of the flower and lays the eggs in it and this causes fertilization and the seeds develop larvae feed on the developing seeds some seeds remain unconsumed for the propagation of the plant species yucca moth larvae you can see feeding on the seeds in the yucca fruit the cost of some of the fruit is outweighed by having such an efficient pollinator it is interesting that the moth cannot survive without yucca flowers and the plant fails to reproduce sexually without the moth Similarly in amorphophallus flowers apart from providing floral rewards also form safe site for laying eggs many visitors consume the pollen and the nectar and do not help in pollination they are called pollen nectar robbers in bee orchid ophrys the morphology of the flower mimics that of the female wasp colpa the male wasp mistakes the flowers for a female wasp and tries to copulate this act of pseudo copulation helps in pollination here you can see the wasp having pseudo copulation in an orchid the pollination in fig 
ficus carica by the wasp blastophaga seems is also an example for similar plant insect interaction here you can see how the relationship occurs a pollen laden female wasp enters the syconium of an unripe fig through an opening known as the ostiole and the fig syconium contains both male and the female flowers the wasp lays eggs within some of the flowers in the syconium in the process the insect pollinates the other female flowers flower ovaries that contain the wasp larvae form enclosing gall like structures the pollinated flowers without larvae produce seeds for the fig plant as the fig matures male wasps emerge first from the galls they then travel the syconium in search of the female wasps fertilizing them while the females are still in their galls male flowers have matured by the time mated female wasps emerge from the galls without ever leaving the syconium the wingless male wasp escapes digs tunnels for their mates and then die after collecting pollen from the mature male flowers within the ripe fig each mated female wasp escapes through a tunnel the female wasp carrying pollen flies to another fig tree in search of a syconium in which to lay her eggs she dies within the syconium soon afterwards this is the relationship between the insect and the fig so today in sexual reproduction plants part 4 we discussed an important pre fertilization event called pollination and we also discussed the importance of pollination thank you kindly subscribe like share and comment our channel read med prep academy log on to www. readmedprepacademy.com our facebook id is readmedprepacademy our email is readmedprepacademy@gmail.com kindly post your questions in the comment box we will reply with appropriate answers thank you very much